Boom. What's up, YouTube? We're here with the uh, with the heat, with the drama. With the drama. So, John McGarrett, it's the drama channel. Uh, we're drama. We're, all we do is drama. And I'm here to talk about the biggest drama that has uh, gone on for the past two and a half years, three, almost three years, three years in August. And that would have been my, uh, my old job. Um, AMPI. Now, I know it's not a good idea to talk about your job and your past work experience from what I've read on the internet is that if you utter a word, a negative, any negative criticism uh, lodged against any company you've worked for, more or less puts you on a trajectory to never be able to work a nine to five again, or at least that's what I've been told. Or at least that's how I feel. Um, but I don't care. Um, if I never get hired by another nine to five again, uh, I may lose everything. But honestly, I'd rather lose everything than work for another shitty corporate company ever again. Um, or a company with a shitty corporate branch, which my experience has been every single one of them. Uh, so where do I begin? Uh, I worked at API. I was a machine operator there. And I ran a prehistoric machine from like the 1300s, I think. And they buy all the replacement parts from uh, uh, Goodwill, from thrift stores, uh, or off eBay or whatever. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, so I was a machine operator, and I worked there for almost three years. And I didn't start as a machine operator. I started as a position called a heavy utility. Heavy utility is pretty much, well, how they break down jobs here at the company is uh, heavy utility and light utility. And heavy utility essentially means jobs for guys. And light utility essentially means jobs for girls. So I was a heavy utility. I would um, dump cheese. I would uh, palletize. I'd push cheese carts. I would. I was supposed to be driving forklift. I never got around to that. And I'd cook because uh, after a few months, they took a notice to me that I didn't quit after three months and then offered me a machine operator job, which by far was the worst decision ever. Well, best. I'll say best. Sorry. Best and worst decision I've ever made in my life. Um, it was very positive in a lot of ways. Uh, working for this, the crappiest company I've ever worked for in my life um, has a lot of positives. I, anyway, uh, but it was also the worst job I've ever taken in my life. And so I take that job and I go through a tremendous amount of stress um, in mental spiritual, well, mental and physical. Uh, I got in a hernia, which the workman's comp company fought me tooth and nail for, um, for my surgery or whatever. And then I also believe I, I well, whatever. Yeah, I suffered physical injuries and I suffered, suffered um, mental anguish like I have not suffered before. And you know, I wasn't the best operator or whatever. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I was a perfect employee and I have my faults and stuff like that. But what the the amount of stress that is put on people there is, uh, I believe, in my opinion, inhumane. Um, it stems from a lot of reasons, which I'll get into later. But yeah, so shout out CNA Insurance. Uh, big fuck you. Uh, go, you can go fuck yourself forever. The agents that I got, they're pretty fucking dumb as fuck. And fuck you. Okay. I got paid, but uh, fuck you. The the amount of stress that you put me through for no reason. Uh, your your statement too in the uh, compromise was wrong, one hundred percent. By the way, this goes through my head a lot. I'm gonna be doing a lot of these little like emotional outbursts because there's a lot of stupid shit that happened there. And so essentially, how this broke down, how I got that hernia, is that I I haul barrels that are about three hundred fifty to five hundred pounds each, and they give me a dolly. But they what they don't say. What they don't say officially is that you have to drag these across the tile floor, which after a fire we had, if everybody knows AMPI and the butter fire. Yeah, so I'm hauling these barrels and I got to haul them all the time because I'm well with seniority because every seniority is king there. Seniority is everything. It has nothing to do with job skill there. So if like uh, you were dying, um, you were bleeding out on the floor and somebody else is bleeding out on the floor, uh, how they would determine who gets to live and who dies is based on seniority at AMPI. So uh, in seniority, your opinion matters more. Seniority, 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 seniority. Seniority, seniority, everything seniority. 
And if you're better at a job, doesn't matter because seniority, because they they earned it. They earned it. They breathe longer than the other people around. You could be a sniveling snake, piece of shit. But if you've worked there for a minute longer than somebody else down the chain, then your word, your you get special priority over everyone else. You're a special special person. Um, anyway, so I hauled these barrels, and I have, I was responsible to haul all of them. And uh, depending on the day, you'd be hauling like sometimes five five barrels, whatever, a dolly, and you'd be traveling, you know, from room to room. And these floors are, um, they're beveled because it's a uh, food processing. So they need to have them run to the center of rooms towards drains. So when you, when you slide them or whatever, you're pulling them downhill and you have to pull them uphill. Uh, the nature of the job, you have to, you can't leave the barrels there. Once barrels are generated, you must get them off the floor because we have like so tight a space, so tight a space that are like walking through a hoarder's house. You 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 would walk around and then there's a, a person in your way or coming for you and then you got to jump out of the way because, you know, seniority. So if you're walking, for instance, if I'm walking and somebody with higher seniority is walking, I'm, I better get out of the way or that seniority person is going to like call the seniority police. I'm going to get taken to seniority jail where I'm going to get beat 50 times. So... Memes aside, jokes aside, I have to haul these barrels out. And sometimes we get upwards of uh, like 30. We'll say 30. I think the most I've ever done was like two pages. So that'd be like 45 barrels in an eight, in a, well, say nine hour shift. The, the production didn't start till one hour into the shift. But anyway, yeah. So I get a hernia. Um, and all that aside, whatever. Um, go to... But what really irks me about it, because I'm not going to sit here and cry because they compromised with me and sent me a big check for 25 grand. Uh, but the thing is, is they in their in their uh, compromise statement, they deny that uh, my job was work that the uh, hernia I had suffered was work related because they we don't touch the barrels unassisted. So they obviously were getting information from people who had no idea what they were talking about which is pretty much the entire management team. So the people that they called who was probably the management team, which they don't go to the floor. They don't go to the floor. They don't watch processes go down. They only, I don't know where they get their information from, but a lot of the management team is super, super disconnected from literally everything that happens on the, on the floor. Uh, API, it's, it's, a big reason that the company I feel is a, the shittiest company I've ever worked for is that the man, I've never seen a management team. So scared or whatever. So dis so detached from the actual production that they have no idea what goes on on the floor. Um, I know they have some ideas, but when you see a manager, it's your direct supervisor, which they're stretched so thin because they're shorthanded everywhere. And uh, there's there's a laundry list here. I should have wrote down all the things I had problems with instead of just trying to freestyle this. So bear with me. Um, the supervisors are super spread out. So you're, you, the only time you see a supervisor is when you don't want to see one. Uh, you need You need one all day. But you only fucking see one when, when, when you're doing something you're not supposed to be doing and they're, they're yelling at you for it. So that's the only time supervisor. But if something's happening where you need a supervisor to make a decision, they're never there. They got 55 meetings a day. Uh, they have like a, a nine o'clock huddle where they all like go shoulder to shoulder and talk about production or something like that. Their issues and stuff like that. And then they go, and this is this is what I imagine goes down. This is kind of a, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like maybe this stuff is talked about, but from the uh, s slow reaction from the management team, just in general on everything. I just feel like this is how the meetings go down. Yeah. Oh man. These numbers. Oh, oh, so much red. Ooh. Uh, ah, ooh, oh, yeah. That sucks. What can we do? I don't know. It's just it, nobody wants to work anymore. Nobody. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Back in our day, people worked harder for, you know, Oh yeah. Mm, yeah. We really did something about that. How? Yeah. Meet here tomorrow, and then essentially, then they go to another meeting. Right after the 9 o'clock huddle, they go have a production meeting. So from like 8.30 to sometimes noon to 1 o'clock, you don't see a supervisor. Um, like I said, unless you don't want to see one because, I don't know. Uh, now I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I know like what a manager needs to do. Uh, I have some idea. I've had management experience and stuff like that. So I understand like, or at least supervisor experience. I understand like meetings need to be had. Uh, direction needs to be given. Uh, we need to decide like what's working, what's not working, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like uh, managers aren't doing anything. It just seems like they're not doing anything. You know what I mean? So that ties me into this problem here is that they, they are so detached from the production of the floor, but they're also just detached in general. There's like no communication. There's like zero, unless I go hunting for it, there's no communication. And that'd be like, 
uh, kids having to ask their parents like when they go to bed, and then instead of you know the parents dictating the rules of like what bedtime is, you know what I mean? Like parents are, you know what I mean? And then the kids get yelled at when um, they didn't go to bed on time, when the parents never communicated to them when it's time to go to bed. Not a perfect metaphor, not a perfect analogy, but I'm saying like I'm just fired from the hip right here. But they don't. There's no, there's zero communication like on a professional level, but uh, that, that brings me to like part B of this problem is that. There is no connection from the company at all. Like, I don't know if it's because it's a union shop. It's the first union shop I worked for and stuff like that. But the management team, um, they they act like a whole, an entirely different company than the uh, labor force. The ones all driving the labor. The the man the people that are supposed to be they're supposed to be managing, supposed to be leading. The ones doing all the work. Like, not saying managers don't do work, but do all the work that directly produces product, like operating, driving forklift, et cetera, um, stacking it, you know, getting it out, servicing the customers. There's no relationship outside. I will say the, there are supervisors that try to have relationships with people, but there ain't no cohesion. There's no, there's no, like you, you hear the jokes about how like uh, management is so, um, they're so happy with all your guys' extra hard work and all the overtime. So they threw us, instead of a raise, they gave us a pizza party. They don't really do that. I've, I've, I've eaten maybe two slices of pizza in the three years I've worked there. And they seem to only reward when it's like everybody is about to like revolt. Um, so like when absolutely necessary. And the only time you see the corporate team is when they're coming for hunting for heads. Uh, that brings me to another story. I operate a machine, up uh, multiple machines in tandem, uh, extruder operator to get uh, sliced cheese out the door, whatever. And I was shown by multiple operators um, a adjustment that I needed to be uh, made on a machine called a stacker or whatever. Sorry, my, my, my uh, camera's going to lag. I don't know why it's been doing that, but I don't care. Uh, anyway, so I have to reach under a guard to make adjustments uh, on this machine if the, the stacker's not stacking because that's just what I was shown. And when we had our fire and we started back up, everybody all the way up to the division manager watched me do these adjustments. Multiple managers, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times seeing me make adjustments like these, never said a word. If I reach into like a machine that's got a lot of moving parts and stuff, supervisors would come over and be like, hey, man, don't do that again. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying like there's not t disciplining me for like doing stupid shit, but like corporate comes through. I was on an off shift and they see me reach under a guard to make an adjustment, um, which, you know, you can clutch your pearls and be like, well, you shouldn't have done nothing wrong. But anyway, sorry, I didn't even get to the end. Sorry. Uh, they give me a, for a first offense, she comes up to me, asks me, well, did you just reach past your guard to do that? And I said, uh, yeah, I guess so. And I catch a three-day suspension for a first offense. No write-ups, nothing like that. Three-day fucking suspension. 10% of my monthly income taken away from my kids. Because I fucking did an adjustment that I was shown, and everybody seen do, and nobody has let me on. There's no warning, no write up, no like correction behavior. They they and when I complained to the union about it, and the the uh, my agent went to complain to the corporate about it. They said, "Well, we were supposed to fire him." Like that, like you know what I mean? Like that's the type of relationship that AMPI's corporate fucking team has with its staff. They go hunting heads. Okay, so. Mm. I want to be so disrespectful right now, and I want to, I want to tell you to shove it, you know where, but whatever. It's not that productive. Whatever. Fuck me, I guess. And they do that to other people. Somebody falls into a belt, hurts himself, breaks a rib, goes to the hospital. As soon as they come back, catch a three-day, bro. Huh. Sorry you hurt yourself, uh, but also go fuck yourself because uh, you broke the rules. You broke the rules. No, no, like, there's no, like, yeah, technically you could say policy says policy says that we aren't supposed to do discipline you but then you know but like where's the moral where's the moral reasoning here like there's no morality taken into account for like is this the right thing to do like what if the policy said slavery was okay does that make the policy like absolute is that like good logic to be like conducting a company with what if like what if the policy said that like all white people should get fired first because that is what a union up in minnesota uh the a teachers union they, they, they sign that type of thing. And there's a lot of like argumentation to be had about that. They start like in their uh, teachers union negotiation that white people need to be fired for. I'm sorry. I'm not going to fucking talk. That's way, that's way out of here. But anyway, you get my point. If the rule said like it was okay to putt babies, like if they're like, 
if if the rule said, you know, at the end of the day, the you have to pump this baby. Like that does that doesn't mean it's okay or not. The, it's just you. I don't I don't get it. I just don't get it. Um, nobody sat down to go like, man. I know we make a lot of money, and a three day suspension wouldn't matter to us because we're a salary or something like that. But these people, you know, you read about like uh, inflation and cost of living increases and all this other crap, and you think it's a good idea to like three days to suspend somebody for a first offense. What I plead, I even pleaded. I, I wrote. When I talked to the union steward, I didn't say, hey, I didn't even contest. Hey, I said, yeah, I get it now. What I did was wrong, but I'm asking is I don't think the punishment fits the crime. I feel like you took me to jail for a speeding ticket, and I would just like that to be taken into account, and I was hoping you guys could like work with me to like reduce the, reduce the pay because that was a lot of money. And they said, go fuck yourself. Sorry, no, the, the judgment stands. You're a piece of shit. Fuck you. We're the best. We're corporate. At least that's how it comes off. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure they'll have a bunch of fancy... If anybody from that company ever sees this, I'm sure they'll have a bunch of fun things to say, but I don't give a fuck. Like, that company is so trash. Like, that corporate team is so trash and disconnected, and they don't care. Like, that that's that's the crux of the issue. Like, they do not care at all. If they cared. They come around more than twice a year to go bust heads. And then like disappear. They don't. They don't do anything for the company. There's no company events. There's no company like thank yous. There's no like cards. There's nothing like that. Everything has to be done in house by the staff. And that kind of ties me to my other part. Uh, a lot of other issues that I had at the plant, and like it goes just with toxic work environment. We, this is perfect segue. Uh, we we actually were being reprimanded. Uh, we we were having meetings as a company about how we don't respect anybody, uh, because. They brought in a bunch of people on second, third shift, and first shift, and their turnover at the company is like over 75% uh, in under three months. And they pretty much pointed the pistol at the staff and said, it's because you guys are bullies. And the ones not snitching the other bullies out, you are, uh, you're okay with it. So like, essentially during this meeting, we were told verbatim here, sorry, this is, this isn't, it's a gist of what they said, but this is what they said. If you witness bullying, and you don't do anything about it, therefore, you are okay with bullying, and you endorse it. So that this is the same. This 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 irked me when they said it, but I wasn't going to try to go like debate me, bro, uh, mode in the uh, meeting. I, I I did. I was uh, taking notes and stuff like that, and I was going to whatever, but I didn't really go in uh, as much because you know, I like everything else there. Uh, I feel like it's a waste of time. Like you, you're wasting your effort. They're going to shoot you down. They're very authoritarian. They're very, there's no, there's no like discussion. There's no teamwork. It is their way or the highway. But anyway, um, it is the same logic as if I'm at a ball and somebody enters that ball with a rifle and then starts shooting everyone. If I do not jump in front of the bullets, if I do not attack the shooter, I am okay. And I'm endorsing mass shooting. Okay, that is the same logic. It is extreme hyperbole, but it is the same fundamental logic. And they said that shit. And that is the like top 10 dumbest things I've ever heard in my life. Uh, there was a million different ways you could handle that respect culture. And what I was waiting for from the meeting also, they would not take responsibility for it. And I know I've heard a lot of things like uh, I've had uh, friends of mine who were, were, were managers and they were trained. Uh, that, so I would not be... Um, Surprise if, the, if this corporate team was also trained to never say sorry, because then that legally makes you liable if, for in some reason. You know what I mean? They never take responsibility. They do not, like if I, if I ran a company and I had an issue like this or any issue, the first thing I would do is I would walk in there and be like, yo, bro, hey guys, this is on me. I let you get away with this shit, but it's not going to fly anymore. And if any of you fuckers don't get in line, I'm going to fucking deal with you. And this is my fault. I let you do this. That's how I'd start the meeting off. I wouldn't sit there and pussyfoot around and like try to like play like these social politics and make people feel uh, like they're morally obligated to report um, bullying or whatever disrespect. Uh, I wouldn't put it on them like that. I would um, enforce my own whatever. That doesn't matter what I would do. Uh, so the staff, the toxic work environment, it does exist. There is a lot of shitty employees that we work with. But um, the the issue is always been, uh, in my eyes, the management team. If your kids are shit, 
do you ever blame the kids? You know what I mean? No, do you blame the parents? Uh, so it is the even like I say this with love. I'm not even saying this is to like talk shit. This is kind of like advice. If you guys want to start fixing the issues at your company, you need to start looking in the mirror and go, "I am a piece of shit." Because you know what? That's what I do. And I'm not saying it's like a brag, but if anybody, I I wasn't the best employee, but I was up there, and I could have been the best employee if I tried harder, and I could have, I would have, but it wasn't worth my time because the panic attacks and the chest pain and all the other crap I was having, uh, tried to cope with it and tried to be respectful of everybody around me and try to act in a loving, according way. And not just succumbing to like the, 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 the same toxicity. And again, I'm not that. And I, I want to, I want to bring this to, I'm not trying to talk shit about the other workers there. Like there are people there who obviously deserve shit talk, but we all deserve shit talk. What I am saying is, I don't think it's necessarily their fault because you don't have any authority to change that. You know what I mean? That'd be like blaming slaves for slavery. I, I know I'm using this analogy a lot, but it's in my head. So I'm going to use it over and over again if it fits. But you're grumpy assholes. You're jaded people because the stress and the pressure that the company is putting on you. You know what I mean? Like a lack of leadership is going to, it's not going to generate anything productive for the labor force to grow into. You know what I mean? Like it's not, and I'm not saying that as an excuse. I think all of you fuckers should try to work on yourselves and stop being such fucking pieces of shit about everything. But, like, I get it. I changed. I became a lot more of an asshole. I was coming home and I was yelling at my girlfriend for no reason about dumb shit because, like, the ladies on the line would be harassing me about dumb ass shit that don't matter. And I'd come home and then whenever my kids would fucking pester me about milk, I'd, I'd lose it because, like, I, I was wasting my entire day holding it in. And that's on me. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that, right? but I get, I'm saying I get it. Okay, so I know uh, I've been taking a lot of shots, firing off the bow uh, at the, the people I worked with and the company in general. Um, but I want to stop here a second and try to say some positive things about the company. So I can't just, I'm trying to be fair. I'm trying to be fair. I, I'm angry. I'm super frustrated with the company. I'm super frustrated with everybody that works there. But I am trying to be fair. Um, I don't like most of you, I think most of you need major attitude adjustments. Uh, but I do, there is positivity everywhere. And that company did pay. They were, it was reasonable hours. The job sucked, but was possible. There was some room for growth. There is some room to excel there. Uh, they do negotiate and have uh, contract negotiations, which I do feel like they do try. My opinion is, both parties do not represent the best interests of the labor staff, but that's just my opinion. I think they just try to get the job done and then just move on to the next one, the next contract, whatever. That's just my opinion. I'm not trying to talk crap. I do, but I do do think they do a fair enough job to like um, keep the company on their toes. You know what I mean? So like that, I feel like is a baseline, bottom line union. Like that's worth the money. You know what I mean? Like at the union, I feel like the dues. Maybe a little high, but they, I do. You, you are getting a service, and uh, you are getting a personalized service that does represent some of your interests. Uh, I think the company wants to care. I think they want to do stuff for the people and stuff like that. Like there's, there's like a lot of maybe individual units inside of the company that want to like. They want to help. They want to care about you. When I talk to them about my issues in the moment, they do seem genuine. Even though when I leave the room, it's like, oh my God, you know, out of sight, out of mind. And, you know, and that oh, that's a perfect thing to bring up. Positive. Okay. This is positive, but this is also just a, a fact of nature. Um, there's children starving in Africa right now. And I don't care. You know what I mean? Like, cause it's not my problem. Right. So I'd be like, I want to care and I want to give them all my money and stuff like that, but my kids got to eat too. And I have a responsibility to uh, where I'm at here. Okay. And it's just, I feel like it's a survival mechanism that your brain does that like you only have so much energy. You only have so much fucks to give. And if you're a supervisor who's understaffed and you have to give a fuck, they tell you you're supposed to give a fuck about 42 people. Uh, you only have so many fucks to give. Okay. So I'm not like blaming them. I say, that's why I say, they want to care. They're just incapable of caring because they're stretched so thin that um, they are incapable of serving anybody's needs. So it sucks. It is the way it is. Everyone suffers because of that. But 
it is a, I'm trying to put it in a positive play. Maybe this doesn't sound too positive, but I'm talking about it now. Uh, I will say other positive things like the coworkers I did, you know, as uh, much as they frustrated me early in my uh, career there, as I, I tried, I've never tried anything so hard in my life to become like the best operator I can be and do everything I could to be a part of the team. And you may have feel differently about that. And that's, that's your prerogative. You can, you can have different opinions of me. That's fine. I'm not immune to criticism. I'm not perfect. I was not perfect. Uh, but I did try my hardest. I want everybody there to know I tried my hardest and I do care about everybody there. You know what I mean? As much as I hate like corporate and I hate the management team and I hate what AMPI is in general, like the, the, when I think of AMPI and like their mission and like their impact on the world, I hate it. I do care about them. And, you know, I have love for the company and I want to see the company succeed. And that's all the way up from the uh, corporate to the owners to whoever, you know, uh, people have done me wrong, even, you know, whatever. I, there's, I have no ill will. Um, like, I'm not going to go out of my way to enact any sort of revenge or anything like that. Um, I just want to kind of fire it and forget about it. I want to just speak my piece and whatever. Oh, sorry. Yeah. About the last thing about the uh, people, like you guys are very nice and like in your own ways, you're very supportive and you do work well as a team. I think you guys are super efficient. Like the company, it's not an environment to thrive. You, the, the best you guys can do is survive. And I think you're surviving very well. I think you're like as a labor force in general, the old heads there, I think you guys do a very good job. Um, there's a lot of things I would also, you know, criticize about you that you could work on. And there's a lot of things about me that you'd criticize. and That's just the world we live in. And I'm not here to like point fingers at you guys. I think you guys are doing the best you can in the environment that you can, because you had, you know, you got, you got bills to pay, you got kids to feed, you got responsibilities to take care of and stuff like that. I don't feel like any of this, why the company is bad is your fault whatsoever. Um, if you disrespect people and they quit and that's perceived from the staff that quits that, that, that you guys are assholes, again, it will always circle back to your leadership. You have no responsibility because you're not being paid to have responsibility. That's why managers and leaders are paid more is because they are being paid to take responsibility, to eat the shit, to figure this stuff out. That is their job. That is, who that is their role. Okay. So I just want to say that. And I'm sorry I left the way I did. And I'm not making this video to talk crap about you guys whatsoever. Um, it all might come off like that. I'm sorry. Uh, and I'm sorry if this like offended anybody or anything like that. Uh, I'm not trying to hurt anyone's feelings. I'm trying to, this, this video's goal is to like lodge um, criticisms at a company and hopefully by baiting a little bit, uh, get a conversation started so that this is the only, my last attempt at trying to make that company better because um, I don't know what else to do. I tried doing it their way. I tried doing it like, you know, being super respectful and maybe I was going to climb the ladder and I was going to like get into leadership myself so I could fix things. But it's just, it didn't work out that way. Uh, essentially, I feel like I was, I had smoke blowing up my ass. All right. So, I mean, like, I do feel like I had uh, smoke blowing up my ass and that there was no potential for me to grow in the company. And that, that runs into another fundamental flaw of the company is that if you don't, Behavior that you reward uh, is behavior you encourage. So essentially the reward structure at API is that you show up to work, you get paid. But beyond that, beyond getting to work and clocking in on time, there is no uh, other rewards. So you are you have a lot of people there with a lot of really good attendance. I mean, you do you get rid of people with bad attendance, but you have good people there with good attendance, but there's no real other reward structure. I mean, they have a perfect tense policy as well, where you get to not miss for a whole quarter. And if you don't, you don't get sick, no doctor's appointments, no lost time. Um, you do get a very special one day off. Very, very special. Very special. Four days a year. If you could miss a whole year without getting sick, post COVID, post COVID, somehow don't get sick. Um, don't get sick. Don't have any lost time. Don't get injured. Don't get any of that. There's like, whatever. There's a million ways to lose this uh, special perfect attendance. But if you could do that, whatever. And some would say it's not really worth the cost. Um, one day off is not worth the cost. Like what it's, it's something, you know what I mean? It's something to try, uh, but it's not that compelling. Uh, now I've ha I've pitched this idea multiple times at the union meeting. Ooh, Ooh, that's another, uh, 
struck a nerve. Anyway, so at the union meeting and also to the company, I, I suggested that, you know, I tell my story about how I used to be a trash employee, like one of the more worst employees you've probably ever seen. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm smarter than I'm smart. I'm a smart enough guy that I know the rules. I know how to um, bend them to fuck, be a fuck, fuck off. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure there's plenty of people at AMPI. You know who I'm talking about. Um, and, you know, towards the end there, I was I was getting pretty fuck off myself. I don't care. Uh, I didn't care because, like, you know what I mean? Like, a company, they they, they show you enough times um, that they don't give a shit about you. Why would I give a shit about them? Um, I'm not saying that that's good. That's a good – I I have shame about that, but that's just, you know what I mean? Like, you can't expect – people. we're all human, you know what I mean? If you don't give a fuck about us, why are we going to give a fuck about you? Anyway, so back at Penda, I worked at Penda thermoforming company, hundred million degrees in the plant. Uh, and I would, you know, I started cause I needed a job and I got there and I heard about a perfect attendance policy. So every month, uh, if you didn't miss, you would be put into a pool of $400, you get a $400 bonus. And if you missed a day or you were late, um, you'd lose that $400. So that would pend up for a time. I don't know if they do this anymore. They probably don't. Cause they're, you know, they probably have a corporate team saying like, why are we giving money to the, to this, to the scum, to the scum of the year? All they do was, all they do is work. Those are, they're not us. They're not us. What are you, what are you giving the money away? It's free money. It's free money for the company. Profit go up, graph go up. But anyway, they probably don't do it anymore. But, uh, they, for a time when I worked there, if you missed that $400, they would not take that back. They would give it to everybody else. At least I, I think so. I tell that story a lot. But I feel like that's what they did. But if not, that's the most genius idea ever. You could do it with like fifty dollars. You could do it with like hundred dollars. You could do it with ten dollars. You know what I mean? And whatever, ten dollars a week. And then every ten dollar, you know what I mean? You have something to look forward to. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm jumping all over the place now. Anyway, so like they would do that, and then they also had another uh, perfect tenants bonus, which was for the month if you were late, you were allowed to be late one day, uh, or something like that for this to to qualify for this one, and you would get profit sharing per hour you work. So then you were incentivizing not only to be there every day, but if you wanted to stack more of this bonus, you could do, because it was four on four off 12 hour shifts and it was every hour you worked, I'm pretty sure. Um, so if you did six days a week, which is your prerogative, you know what I mean? You're, you're, you're capable. They weren't forcing. I mean, they did sometimes force uh, over time, all companies do, but you would be much more inclined to work six days a week because now you are getting was it six times 12, uh, 60, 72 hours, 72 hours a week. I believe that is, um, 72 hours of a week of the bonus pay because it was a, a, a penny amount or a cent amount that was added. I think the lowest is like five cents. And then like the best I saw was like a dollar. And then it's per hour worked. So there was multiple layers of incentives that you could layer on that probably, you know what I mean? Didn't cost too much for what you got in return. You know what I mean? And there's easy ways to track these metrics. Um, but why aren't you doing anything? Like, I don't know. I know you guys all got your MBAs up at the corporate office and you're all special, special people, super geniuses who went to college and paid a lot of money and you got trained to do something a certain way and blah, 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 blah. And everything looks cool on paper, but then you act with it. I don't know. There's a million excuses in the book. I'm sure you guys know better than me because I'm just a high school dropout, but somehow I could turn your shittiest line into like one of the higher, highest producers in the plant. And you know, I know I'm just a high school dropout, but you know, I was capable. I was, uh, you know, I was magically your rework problem went down magically, magically, magically. It all just magic, magic. Nobody understands what's going on magic. And I'm not going to take full, uh, I'm not trying to gas myself up a little bit, but I feel like I got to gas myself up a little bit because they're, they're fucking stupid because it's not me I'm talking about, but you're like them not having any incentives for anybody to grow into. You're leaving, you're leaving money on the table by not like, uh, getting talent. You you barely paying more than everybody else in town is not enough to get you to fucking come there. Like, oh, we give 401k and uh vacation and uh uh the the we did a retention bonus, but then we took it away. Uh okay, so why would it, why would anybody go to your company? We pay. Yeah, but um if you're doing the same thing as everybody else. Expect the same results as everybody else. And call call any other plants in town. <laughs> oh, that voice that fucking ruined my throat. Anyway, call anybody else in town and ask them how their labor uh, their labor force is going. Do you guys all think that it's because nobody wants to work everywhere, or maybe uh, maybe all companies are starting to suck at everything? Uh, they just so they're so stupid. Uh, they're so risk averse 
you know, safety, this safety. Oh my God, safety, safety. They're so risk averse that they've made us, they made, they've turned themselves into like manager mental handicap people. Like, I don't know, like that they, they, they're just like, they're so risk averse. They need to, we need to, we need to mitigate risk, 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 risk management, risk management, risk management then to the point where it's like crippling. You know what I mean? Like you might as well like, uh, cut, uh, uh, cut people's feet off, make it so that they're not allowed to walk anymore because they might slip and fall and injure themselves. I mean, like that's not the, anyway. Yeah. Um, they just, I don't know, like ra that ran aside, like the, uh, yeah, so I just want to take a shot at the uh, union here. That's a perfect spot for me to take a shot at the union. I was, uh, I tried to have meetings with uh, upper management at the uh, company and they're like, wait, wait for the union, uh, union contract, bro. Talk about this is the union contract, bro. Like, yeah, all your problems are going to be solved in the union contract. You can talk about it at the union contract. And I went to the union meeting. And they're like, bring all your best ideas, all your best ideas. Da, 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 da. So I, I wonder if I still have them. Let me see. I might have, I probably deleted them, but. Oh. Uh, yep, I do have them. Wow, we did I have? All right, one sec. Let me, let me, uh. Just a little bit here. One second. Sorry. Sorry, everybody. Sorry to the two people watching this. So I had proposal ideas, cover page, preface, table of contacts, executive summary, introduction, proposal, conclusion, blah, 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 blah. but they essentially, I, I came up with a bunch of these um, ideas. And let's see, like the perfect tense programs in here. And I typed out these big log documents. Uh, operator raise uh, proposal. You know. Gym membership, maybe. Flex role, additional pay. Uh, employee performance review and compensation. Adjustment system. Uh, cell phone policy. This one was my own personal bias. If anybody knows me there, like, I'm addicted to my cell phone. I need my cell I need my cell phone. If I don't hit my cell phone. Oh, yeah. I have my cell phone all day. That's me. I need this. Anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, so like this one, for instance, employee performance review and compensation adjustment. I propose a system to help our company value its employees and recognize the importance of fair compensation for their hard work and contributions. In line with this, I propose the implementation of employee performance review and compensation adjustment system. The system will allow employees to make a case for a periodic review of their performance in order to request an increase in pay in increments of 25 cents. To balance this towards management's favor, it will also provide management with the ability to conduct periodic reviews to adjust employees' wage, either upward or downward, based on various performance metrics, skills, and abilities, thus allowing another tool for management to hold employees accountable. Um, so that I kind of broke it down of like, just different ways that like we need like checks and balances so that like you know managers can't just play favorites or they can't just uh whatever like uh, you know the employee would be able to initiate the, this themselves and then there's just like kind of like uh there's different ways to implement the system and the reason why I, this one in particular is because this system already exists in the company for the maintenance staff but fuck the white helmets right but anyway yeah so that's that's neither here nor there uh the reason why i bring these up is because i i Printed all these off. I went out, bought a printer so I could print these off and then make these all official and stuff. And I turned it in at the uh, union meeting and they, I waited, I waited, and I waited. I went and talked to a steward and then they, uh, she said, I asked, hey, did any of my ideas make it through? I wasn't expecting like, you know, all of them to be pitched, but they're like, no, uh, we all decided that the company would never go for that. So uh, they weren't going to add any of them to the bid. So like, uh, no offense to anybody on the, uh, on the uh, bidding community, but that's kind of horse fucking shit, bro. Like, I'm paying you, buddy, to go talk to the company about things I want, and then they tell you to tell me to go fuck myself, or else why am I paying you fucking money? Like, I don't need to pay somebody money to go tell pitch an idea to the company, and then the company for me to tell me to go fuck myself. I've, I've, done, I've been dealing with that my whole life. So that's my only little gripe with the union, is that I worked my fucking ass off to try to come up with systems that might actually benefit, and then I was uh, cut off I feel I was cut off at the knees before uh, even given an opportunity to be cut off by the knees. You're supposed to be representing me, I thought. Uh, so that little gripe, kind of a fuck you. But uh, that's pretty much my only issue with the union. I'm not trying to start beef with uh, with the union. I think they ultimately do a pretty good job. But 
fuck you for that one. But uh, yeah, now I'm over it. Because I was able to uh, be, I feel heard. I feel heard. Anyway, getting a little manic here, getting a little spicy. I'm um, going to try to move on. Um, so again, behavior that is rewarded is behavior you encourage. Uh, this would be a potential solution for your company to like boost it up. Um, and like, you know what I mean? Like some of these ideas here, um, even a cell phone, you know what I mean? Like I made this case all the time. What's the difference between a cell phone and people just talking? I talk all the time there. People talk all the time there. Uh, we don't need cell phones to not be productive. Um, we, as a labor force, find ways to not be productive all the time. It is managers, um, responsibility to identify work that needs to be done and to handle the, uh, hand it out to them. So that like, this is kind of a general complaint I have with all companies, but busy work is stupid as fuck because you're you're like in in, in one hand on one hand, uh, busy work's pretty good. So by busy work, I mean like uh, randomly sweeping, looking like you're busy. Go fi- go find something to do. No, that's your job. Find me something to do. I'm paid to do work, not to do your job to find something to do. Maybe this is just a personal opinion here, but anyway. Ah, uh, maybe that's a non-point. I mean, that's a general thing. Like, um, all companies should probably work on that. You should have things for your employees to do. Oh yeah, cell phones. Sorry. So, cell phones. It would be like a free, on paper, free. You know what I mean? It does not cost you money to remove the cell phone rule from your company because how I how I thought about this idea is that like, um, take me for instance, since I'm I'm so addicted to cell phones. But besides my addiction. Uh, I didn't really get along with a lot of people there, so I wasn't very um, socially advantageous for me to strike up conversations with people that uh, I knew wanted to stab me in the back in the first instant that they could. Um, so I would, I would prefer to be by myself all the time, but it would be nice to have an option for my cell phone um, to text my girlfriend and see how the kids are doing or something like that. Uh, also... The cell phone issue, I have a personal grapple with too because I've heard stories about how the office doesn't forward calls to the floor. So let's say like my son is going to the hospital again. He's got MPS, uh, Hunter syndrome. So there is a risk that he will be called at any point. Um, I don't want to worry about your understaffed office not directing a call to the supervisor that usually is on the floor running around handling issues because she's understaffed. Uh, I would prefer the right to be able to answer my phone. Um, You... Expect us to act like adults and you treat us like little children who can't be expected to act like adults. Um, the cell phone would be, again, on paper, a free incentive for people to come to your factory too. Because I mean, like you got Gen Z coming up. You got Gen Z, Gen Alpha, all these people who are cell phone addicted or whatever. You know, they use screens. There's the screen generation. Who do you think is going to work at your company? Or who do, whose company do you think they're going to go work for? What's going to be their first pick? You think it's going to be... Your factory, where they can't even look at a cell phone, or you know, I mean, like I digress. Uh, that point stands on its own. Other ideas I have are like uh, a gym membership thing. I was out there, yeah. Um, I think the operators are way too underpaid. Uh, you, you, I've heard from certain people in the management team that operators are the quarterbacks. I don't really watch sports, but they're the quarterbacks. Without them, without Tom Brady, you you know, he don't have a team, bro. Like, yeah, but the operators only get paid a dollar more, dollar fifty more than positions. You know what I mean? Like, I think the lowest paid position is only paid like $3 less than them. Plus, there's like a uh, operator and then a $7 jump to op, uh, maintenance trainee. And I've heard out of trainees um, from the maintenance staff that – why would I become a coordinator? It's only more, an extra dollar, and then they would expect things out of me. All while the dude was standing in front of a uh, or sitting in front of an e stop button, not doing a damn thing. Uh, he was an essential function, but I was getting my ass blasted by the machine I was working on, and he was sitting there saying like he was just bragging to me about how much money he's making and doing literally nothing for it. While I was trying my hardest to um, Prove myself to get 50 cents for the special skills, which it says very clearly I have the union contract right here. One moment. I know this is going to be a dead time, and I'm not supposed to do that. It's not good for retention, but. Category C. 
Machine Operator Special Skill. The Machine Operator Special Skill classifications require one year of experience as a Category B Machine Operator or have equivalent skills as determined by management. In addition to one year experience or equivalent skills, the individuals in A, C, B, or C are subjected to periodic reveals by management panel consisting of personal. Da, 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 da. This panel is determining body to upgrade, downgrade, or return of poise to their previous job. So, like the jump from machine operator to special skills, let me tell you here. Uh, 2319 to 2381. So, what is that? 60 cents, something like that? Um, that ain't shit. Uh, but what you asked for me as the management team, to, you, you expected me to make lines that were unrunnable. Um, runnable. And not only runnable, but you wanted me I, my rework to be zero. And you wanted my, I don't know. Like, you were putting metrics on me. You were putting constraints on me that operators literally have no control over. Um, when I was asking a coworker about, hey, man, <laughs> after like a year and a half of this. I, I don't know. Do you think do you think I'm a special skilled operator? And he's like, you're damn close. You're damn close. I'm like, well, what do you got? You got any advice for me? He's like, work on your rapport with the women, indicating that the uh, women on the line held the keys to my raise in their hands. So he essentially, no offense, I'm not saying this, this is, it was good advice. Um, it did get me eventually special skills, was to play politics and get the women to like me more so they'd stop destroying my reputation to the whole plant. Um, I feel like I was uh, unfairly treated there as a operator. I feel like I was held back, and what you guys asked for me, and like this is a, this is not just me. I'm bringing this up uh, to bitch because I love the bitch, but as a uh, common theme, a commonality, and I feel like this happens throughout the company is that you you ask for the world and you give pennies. You ask for hundreds of thousands of dollars of effort and you give pennies in return. Um, quite literally, I mean, like would you do the math for the like uh, what is it like? I could beat operator to run the line at like 50% OEE, 50 to 60% OEE and the, whatever. And you want, cause like there's people, there's operators in the plant running that every single day and they don't get fired. So, you know what I mean? Like to get the baseline, the, the bottom line is if I can turn the machine on and then like get some cases out the door, uh, I will keep my job. But for me to get the 60 cent raise, I need to um, become a cheese savant, uh, an operator savant. And I need to learn the intricacies and every little basic detail when the contract outlines one year's experience or one year skill experience. And you put any motherfucker in that factory on one of those extruders in one year. And uh, no, not sorry. Line three, the line I ran. And you you have them run that bitch for a year when the first year I was I was on the outs and being like, no, nobody would help me. I mean, I had one coworker, but as soon as she was gone, I I had had my. You know, I mean, like, I'm not perfect. I'm not trying to talk talk shit about the staff I work with and stuff like that. But I feel I was on the outs. I was a baby. I was whatever they said. So then nobody was inclined to step up and help me. I had to always go hunt for it. Um, the point is, nobody would be able to do what you asked me to do in a year. And then I hear about other operators in the plant running a uh, certified label maker getting special skills within a couple of months um, of them getting the job. And like I said, those are details, which um, there's probably context missing, which would probably be cleared up if there was communication. Um, but that does not exist at the plan either. Um, I don't know. Behavior that is rewarded is behavior you encourage. And bottom line, you don't reward anything except for whining, bitching, Snitching, seniority, showing up to work. I, I, I not working. I'm saying you don't. In, you do not reward working. You reward showing up and clocking in and being on the clock. You don't reward working. You literally just get a paycheck just from doing the bare minimum and whatever. And like that's your fault as a company. Uh, all right. Now watching all that back and kind of getting a gist of uh, everything I talked about. I kind of. I kind of feel like I've talked about enough things to really um, wrap this up and kind of tie it all together. But I got one more quick point, I guess. Um, my biggest issue with this, why do I, why do I care so much? Uh, why do I care? Why do I talk so much crap? Why am I still even bothering to like make a video about this? And ultimately, I believe uh, most of the problems that are being caused, this is going to be a heavy 
a heavy accusation to, to lodge at one company, but it's it's more of a general theme I'm seeing in the whole country. Um, and this company is contributing to that. Um, what, I, what I'm seeing is that through apathy from leadership, um, through uh, uncaringness from selfishness, from others or whatever, uh, discrimination from the management to the labor force, the not give it a give it a frig about uh why am I, I don't care give, not give it a fuck about the uh not give it a fuck about anybody but themselves the uh, politics the backstabbing the the lack of incentive the lack of uh, vertical uh, you know sharing the wealth you know the company is probably making uh, court like profits every quarter uh, and it's not like it's not being divvied out. Uh, I feel, I feel that the company is serving its own interests, and it's not and, and that it's it's treating like the staff like it's not a part of its own interest. Like the labor force makes up the company, but the okay. So why this matters is that what I feel is wrong with America is that uh, from just what I've been reading and seeing and just seeing on the internet and uh, what other people talk about. I've talked to like thousands of people on video games and stuff like that and through partying and all this other stuff. It's a general theme running through all these businesses that my boss doesn't give a shit. The company doesn't give a shit. They just try to exploit me and they treat me like shit. It's not, you can't, it's not even, uh, it's not even just that you can't like leave them alone and just like let them rot. You have to like, actively go out of your way as a company to like create stupid ass policies that like uh force supervisors and managers to go after people and when you make employees feel like shit don't pay them and don't treat them with respect and dignity they they take that home to their kids and then they take that home to their wives and they take that home to their husbands and they take that home to their family that negativity that toxic work culture that you're you're creating like a farm of uh you know like a crop like you're you're the soil your environment the work environment is the soil and you're growing toxic toxicity and you're you're sending that into the societies that you're allowing your businesses to operate in and then they take it out on their family members they go to the bar and they start drinking heavily they start you know smoking weed they start doing heroin they start doing this and that and you're contributing through that because you are creating it's not just hard work it can't, it's not just the job you're creating like extra stressors onto the job by being apathetic and being a shitty set of leaders that you are actively, in my opinion, you're actively contributing um, to the downfall of American society because that, like I said, that negativity goes home. It gets put onto the kids. Those kids take it to school and then they're, you know, they're negative at school. And then, you know, the, the teachers too, and all these other people, nobody seems to give a fuck except for about anybody but themselves. And they don't look at the big picture. And I don't think that you really understand the scope of it, and I'm sure it's a debate to be had, and um, I haven't really fleshed this out. This is just a very strong, passionate feeling I get, is that your company is literally destroying the fabric of society. It's, it's, it's not, if you're not positively influencing society, you're negatively influencing it. There's no neutral. There's like, a, uh, so that's it. You know what I mean? Like this is kind of like a last attempt to like throw throw shade or take shots, do whatever I think is I can to try to push back. What whether this hit, makes it to any manager's ear or they change behavior. If anything, I mean, maybe somebody takes something from this and then they uh, know how to fight in the company. I don't know. Uh, whatever. I just don't want to like go to sleep um, anymore, knowing that I didn't try everything I could have to try to uh, stop wrong um as cringy as all that sounds it's just I, I i care a lot about my fellow man and uh i see a lot of issues in the world and the way companies are ran and, and personal and no offense to you guys but the way that you're running this this company is uh it is doing harm to society it is doing harm to the towns that to this town that you are um you're stationed in and i think you guys should be ashamed of that whether you want to admit it publicly or not i at least hope that somebody listening to this will that maybe hopefully gets down to your soul or something like that and you pat you can actively or passively make decisions in your own life to not be as much of a piece of shit anymore um and maybe start to make amends and try to like 
focus on people first instead of your stupid whatever your guys is dirt, like your I don't know I don't know how you operate. Um I just don't get it. I'm very confused. Like I've tried to have conversations with you guys and you push my meetings off over and over and over again until you just, I just stopped answering your email or the last meeting we were supposed to have you said that we would reschedule it later and then we never did and I just let it go. I didn't I didn't follow up. I was I was done chasing you. Uh it was pretty clear to me that the company I was not um a part of the company's overall conversation to help change the culture and you know in the position I was in I had no authority to change anything. I could have I mean I did what I could. I tried to be a positive um a worker. I always tried to help. I always stepped up. I tried harder than, like I said, I've tried harder at this job than I've tried harder at anything really in my life ever. I gave this my honest try and I can go to bed or I can finally walk away and say that I, I can't, I couldn't do anything else. Um, I'm sorry to everybody I left. I hope I, I, I trained my coworker pretty, my coworkers pretty well and uh, passed the knowledge I knew about my line on. To hopefully make it a tr smooth transition for any, uh, the people who are supposed to take over for me. And I hope I didn't really uh, ruffle too many feathers, I guess. I mean, I, I'm sure people are going to be upset with a lot of the things I said in this video, but um, oh well. Uh, um, say what you will. Um, think what you want. Uh, probably none of you will probably even actually see this, so I guess it is what it is. But this is the... Uh, Goodbye, I guess. Uh, it was nice working with y'all. I mean, most of you. I mean, yeah, even the ones I don't like, even the ones I hated, y'all taught me lessons that I'll never, I'll never forget. And uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully the company pulls their head out of their ass and then uh, serves you guys right, like serves you correctly, and can start repairing some of some of the issues that they're causing. Um, yeah. With that though, peace out. I uh, hope you have a nice day. I'll catch you in the next one.